In 1977, Atari defined something we today casually refer to as the joystick port, a 9-pin sub-D connector that was standardized and used in many, many retro computers. Today we're going to make use of this port and actually build a joystick from scratch. So we're going to build an arcade joystick, but we are not using this case. This case and all the stuff that's in it is nice. Here's even a USB controller for attaching this thing to a Raspberry Pi, but we won't use this. Instead, we're going to ditch this controller, this case, and we are only keeping two buttons because the C64 supports only one button. I'm coming to why we use two in a minute. We use some leftover cabling from a destroyed quick shot joystick. We'll get to this in a minute. We will use the arcade joystick part, nice clicky joystick. The joystick connector, which we will, I guess, destroy. Of course, the little ball that goes up here, and this little cover, and the screws, and all the other parts we don't need because I've designed a case for a fighting joystick myself. Through the magic of editing, here's the case. As you can see, this is a top plate. Has room for two buttons and the stick. I called this a retro, retro fighter. And the bottom half with a little retro as a new black print inside. Not much to see here. Round edges or round feet for added stability. And you can put some rubber feet or um, some felt feet under here so that it doesn't scratch the table and gets a bit more uh, grip. Okay, first thing to do is to actually connect no the buttons and the stick. And for that we have these screws. By the way, these biohazard bags are my favorite screw bags. These normally come with uh, Corona tests, those quick tests. <clears throat> but I usually, if I use these tests, I take this stuff and throw it in the trash can without the bag, because I like the bag, biohazard. So this stick, and it's pretty much, um, it pretty much doesn't matter which way around you put this, because through the wiring you, you decide if it goes up, down, left, right. So. You could also do this way, this way. Um, I thought about this, but then you would have the screws under your hand, which is not great. Okay, so this should line up and it more or less does. So let's put this in. Since the 3D printer is not too precise, we have to screw the screws in. It should normally go just through without screwing. As you can see, they come out nicely. By the way, I get a lot of questions about my 3D printing skills, or the designing skills, um, saying I'm using my 3D printer very often. And that, and this is, I guess, my sixth or seventh design, so I'm not a huge 3D printing guy. I just see that uh, there's a lot of potential when designing electronic projects. <coughs> I don't have the room for proper workshop here, so... So I don't know if this design works, to be honest. It took me about two hours to design this, with some ergonomics in mind, like 
uh, don't put screws where hands go and stuff like that. At least where you can, where you have the option. You don't have the option here because, oh, okay, there goes the ball flying. Okay, that's that. Now this goes here and this goes on here. And we have our first step done. Well, it looks quite nice. Moves perfectly. Might be a nice experience to play. So next up are the buttons, and I will pick one, which is actually these. Oh no, I will grab one. Ah, oh, these are good. <coughs> Pretty much the same, but on some I already cut these connectors, so I will keep the ones with the connectors and use these where the connectors have been cut off because why not and these these buttons are just pushed in here and they're held in with these little clips i like the other buttons which you can screw um, in better but these are actually 30 millimeters and I had them laying around so I took these should fit in here nicely look at that oh this is already pretty cool <coughs> and the second one it's a snug fit but that's good that's a good thing oh, look at that Nice little retro fighter. Next step is to wire this whole thing up. So there are only two buttons, one stick, and <clears throat> I guess we will use this cable here and simply cut these or connect these with some of those um, bread bin connection cables and cut these. I'm not quite sure yet. I guess I will do that. Okay, there are some questions. Question number one, which pin or which cable gets connected to this connector and where and how? Um, second question, how does a joystick work just with cables? So the beauty of this construction is, or the C64 and the Atari joystick port, that um, they pretty much require no electronics except for buttons. So you could actually play a game and that might be a challenge for someone who's out there just using these cables and um, I guess black is ground on this one. So if you use these two cables you might uh, run left or right. So this does the same as a button. It's clicking. And there's no logic in those early joysticks, except for maybe if you have some uh, auto fire function, then there's a little uh, controller, microcontroller that uh, does the button push for you. But else, there, there's just a matter, it's just a matter of grounding data lines. And that is what these buttons do. And if you look closely in, in this joystick, there's a micro switch, there's a micro switch, there's a micro switch. So there are micro switches all over the place. They're just switches. So let's have a quick look at the pinout of the Atari joystick port. And you will see we have six cables coming out of this. And this view is a view of the connector if you look straight into it. If you look straight into the connector, this is what we have here. So it's a little hard to see on camera, but actually pin five, so this upper left here, pin nine and pin seven are not even populated with context. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. And what does it all mean? So on pin one, we have up, on pin two we have down, pin three we have left, pin four we have right. So these are the directions. Then we have pedal B, which is only used on the Commodore pedals. 
we have pin six, which is fire. There's only one fire button. So we have two buttons here. I will come to that in a minute. We have pin seven, which is five volts, which is not connected. It's only connected for the pedals. Those pedals regulate the voltages and send them back into the machine. So um, that's how the Commodore actually uh, notices the difference if you turn the pedal. And we have pedal A because pedal, uh, pedals always come in pairs. If you know these Commodore pedals, oh, let me get one. Here are the Commodore pedals. And if you look at the connector, you can see two cables going to each one of these. And these are pretty simple constructions. It's just a potentiometer that gets turned. Five volts get fed in. These gets turned and they um, send down the value of this. And I guess they me measure this 200 times a second or something. I might be wrong about that. No. And so the machine knows if you turned and how, how far this pedal. So these are actually original Commodore branded pedals. Came with some eBay bundle and they're worth quite a bit. We have pin eight, which is a very important pin because pulling stuff to ground, which is what we have to do with this uh, joystick, is connecting ground and the appropriate uh, line we um, want to fire. So like fire, or left, right, up, down. So these will all connect on ground on one side and to the uh, corresponding data line. So for fire button one, this would be pin six on the other. And if you push it, you connect these. So pull them to ground and that will fire or the same here, because as I said, these are also switches. And you can see how these micro switches get pushed here. Really like this click. Makes for a very nice controller feeling with this. Now there's a irritation about the second fire button. Why is there a second fire button if there's only one button supported? If you ever played games like Genesis does or any other jump and run game, you know that to jump you have to push up. And I really hate that. So what I'm going to do is I will put the up motion not just on the stick, but also on the second fire button, which is here for the first fire button, we connect six and eight. So these are the two data lines. And on the second button, we will connect pin one and eight, uh, one and eight, just like on the up motion of the joystick. And that will give us a second button especially for games like Genesis, so we don't have always to push up. We can just jump with the second button and fire with the first. Neat. Next thing to figure out if you have one of these cut off joystick cables, there are different ways to go and find out which cable is which. If you cut this from a real joystick, you can have a look at the PCB, which is um, rather simple. In the case of this quick shot where I got this from, it's just some metal tongues which push down on a um, contact on the PCB. And you can re relatively good um, see where which cable goes. So which cable is up and down and left and right. If you're just left with a cable, you can simply grab this connector. And that is what we are going to do because I have no idea which cable is which. And you grab one of these Brad pin connectors or some other kind of, could be a nail or a um, paper clip. And you put it in these contact holes and you use your multimeter set to continuity, which is this little diode. And you put one lead on this pin. And then and in my case, I have to push a little because this pin is not as thick as the contact. And then you just probe around. And as you can see, you have a hit right away with the white cable. So if I do the same with the, with the orange cable, there should no, be no continuity and there is none. So 
we now know that the that pin number one is the white cable and is up. So up is white and we will take note of that. And I will go th through all the pins just like that and write it down. So that's the first half. It's not very hard to Imagine which cables lead to which button, but we don't know yet which of these cables is which direction on the stick because we could put this in any way we want. So to find out which one is which, we first have to find out which of these cables is ground. And usually on these constructions it's either the most outermost left or outermost right pin. So we will check for that first and we will see the outermost left is the blue one and if we connect the blue and the purple in this case and now we need two of these pin cables we put them in here and we will see if this gives continuity it doesn't yet because we have not yet moved the stick around. Oh, and there we go. So pushing left, you can see moving here. So we now know that probably one of these two cables <coughs> is ground. And since I'm, I believe that the outermost pin is ground, I will now connect some other pin and will check And now we're going to leave the blue one and put the other one into the next because if it now beeps we know that this is ground because there's only one ground cable and it's a little bit like this mastermind game so you have to find the right combination if this is now the right combination we should get another beep for another direction and there it is that's right okay so the ground pin is the blue one in my case and all the other pins or cables there are just four other four directions so now we have to figure out which cable here is which direction and write that down okay so now we know all the connections and the only thing we have to do, so our wire, wiring diagram would look, let's try to do this on paper, we have our stick, we have our button one, button two, and that has two leads, and it doesn't matter if uh, you take the left or right as ground because it's only closing circuit, so, um, so let's just say these all our ground then we have a common ground line so this is ground this is ground this is ground we have to connect these three lines then we have our fire button one and fire button two and fire button one connects to let's check the other side fire button one connects to pin number six so this goes to six on the connector. Fire button two goes, let me quickly draw in the directions. Uh, so these are the, this is up, down, left, right. And this line has to be connected to the up line here so we will have this and this connects to pin which is the up pin pin number one <coughs> on the connector and all the other lines simply connect to the corresponding two 
three, four. So this goes to two, three, four. And there we have our six, six connections. One, two, three, four. Uh, where's five? Okay, five isn't used. Six. And our common ground, of course, which is eight. So this goes to pin number eight. Pretty easy wiring. And if we do this, we should have a working joystick with the second button, which does actually jumping in Great Genesis does in other games. So let's fire up the soldering iron and wire this up. Let me just have a quick drink from my Kylo Ren cup. Not a big fan of the later Star Wars movies. I'm more an Empire guy, but nice cup anyway. So we have our wiring, wiring diagram. <clears throat> Put this over here so that you can see it. And I guess we will start with the buttons. And this right here is button number one. And we will use the red line as uh, the data line and the yellow line as the ground line. And we will first put together all the data lines. And in the end, we will put together one common ground line. So for button number one, we have um, pin number six, which is orange. So we will grab our cable, the orange side of this, and put on some heat shrink, and we will put these together. And this works much better if you use soldering grease on the cable. So just put a little, put this over here so I can see it. Just put a little soldering grease up here on the tip of the cable and this will work much much better in terms of um, taking on the solder as you can see makes a little noise and you know you're good so that is the first one and we will just Drink this. Nice. Then we have the ground line, which we will leave out for now because we will create a common ground later. Then we have button number two, and button number two we will also use we will use the black line as the ground line and the red line as the data line, just like before. Put on some heat shrink and as we said that goes to line one which is up so we put this to the white cable on the connector cable a bit short but we are not going to solder this right now because we'll just twist it together we will have to also connect this to the up line of the joystick and we will quickly check which one of these lines was up up is uh, black so we will use the black cable and twist this in also and solder this together after greasing it up a little So we got our button connected, our second button. And again, we leave the ground wire um, out for now because we are doing a common ground in a minute. Okay, let's wire up the, the rest of the directional cables from the, from the jo joystick. going through this step by step so if you want to build along you can use a different case you can use the 
uh, original case I had it. This is cost, I guess, 10 bucks on AliExpress. But the downside is you have six buttons or eight buttons that don't do anything, or you have eight holes um, that don't do anything. So I went ahead and print, print my own. All that's left is to connect all the ground wires from this button, from this button, from this, from the joystick, the black one from the connector cable. Twist these all together, and these have to be soldered really good. And there you have it, completely connected joystick. Let's put this joystick together, or shall we test it first? Hmm. No, let's try to fit it in. So here's actually a little hole which should house the cable nicely. Yeah, that works. Because I noticed something else, and that is this doesn't fit in here. That's unfortunate, it's the design flaw in my design, but can't push it any further. And as you can see, this should line up, these, these edges should line up with these edges, and they don't. And that is because just this joystick is just a bit bulky on the side. So I will update my design, but this takes seven hours to print. So I guess I will simply cut in here on these sides and cut out this little piece and update my design. You can um, download the design for free. I'll put a link on uh, in the YouTube uh, description. And let me just cut out this. Always be willing to destroy your creation. That's what real freedom is. Now it fits like a glove. Okay, so playing this seems okay, but not great. Because, and you can only see this if you really try it, two things. First thing, you have no place to put your hand and there's this corner here. So I either do some rounding here so that the hand does not get pushed into this corner. And the second thing is that if I put my hand here, I'm also pushing down on this corner. So it would be much easier if there would be some extra rounding here and here to put my hand on. So I guess we'll go back and design just that. And we will also design that this right here is covered up. Not a big deal. But Maybe first we should try if this really works without anything. I could just put it in here for now. Okay, let me grab a C64 and we're good to go. Got the C64 with the funky keyboard out. Put an SD to IC in. Not yet connected. The joystick, I mean. Loading up the FB64, which is the file browser for the SD to IC. And we go into the zero folder and see what we have. We have Bubble Bobble, Dick Dark Barbarian, Bomb Jack, Bruce Lee. Oh, I guess we can use Bruce Lee. Let's try that one. Here we go. Let's see. Let's 
can play to port one. Ah, yeah, it is. Yeah, look at that. And our jump button also works. So this is button number one, and this is button number two. Wow, this is awesome. Playing Bruce Lee with pushing up for jump is really a pain. So this makes this game so much more enjoyable. And we will check if we can also use the down direction. And yes, it works. Look at that. Working C64 joystick from scratch. Oh man, this is so much better than pushing up. And I'm not the greatest player in the world, so... Not falling down is a really good thing for me. Fight! Oh. Bam. 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 Yeah. Man, this is so great. I guess it's time to design a version 2 of this because I'm already getting pain in my hand from the corners. And we'll come back with version right, number 2. We have a few tweaks to do. Um, first of all, we have to extend Quickly grab the joystick. We have to extend this area so that the hand has some more space to rest. So I will add some circular thing here and I will cut out this edge so that the hand can actually doesn't press against doesn't press against this corner right here. And then we have to realign the holes, but that will just be a matter of turning the bottom piece around. So I will put the uh, riding on the other side and this hole on the other side and widen this hole a little so that I can actually use the strain relief from the cable. Okay, so that's what we're going to do and you can see what I do now. And now we have to take care of this space down here, which we want to cut out. And again, we have this sharp corner. So maybe I just add something instead of cutting away something. Okay, so that would be the finished result. So I'm gonna export this as an SDL, which is the file format my printer, uh, no, my slicer accepts. And then I will go into the slicer, I can show you, export this, have to deselect this, export STL. And then we get a model down here. And if I start my slicer, which is the Prusa slicer in my case, 
and I pull this in here. You can see it fits right on my print bed, which is this right here. And I normally print with about 10% infill, which means that not all of this solid space is really solid, but it's wavy lines inside. Um, and the higher the infill, the more wavy lines you, you get until 100% where it just plain prints and that takes hours and hours. So 10% is okay, it gives good stability. And here's the result and it would take three hours and 47 minutes to print. And what you can do is you can even see how it prints. If you go here, you can see it prints the first layer and then builds up on that. There come the wavy lines until we're all done. So this is uh, about four hour print. And then I do export G-code. Let's call this Red Row Fighter Top. Save it. So my desktop, I put it on a USB stick, put it in my 3D printer and print away. So that's the top half. And now we have to take care of the bottom half, which we have to add this rounded space here for the joystick. And we have to put this opening for the cable on the other side because the screw holes only match up like this. Let's do this. The camera broke down, but I did actually finish this. I added some cube sized little spaces over here. We have to keep, keep this because this will stick out of the housing. And since we have this right here now, we also have to go back into our top piece because no. this would stick out here so I will have to add at least some rounding over here still not my favorite design looks like a little car that's driving in this direction here it's okay I don't mind. Yeah, that looks nice. I guess we are ready for the next printing session. So let me export this and I see you back on the bench. The printer finished the second top plate and as you can see it's quite a bit larger in size and I already removed all the parts from the other plate and will now go and 
screw all this in here while the printer prints the bottom half which will take about eight hours so i'll get back to you when i have all the stuff put in so it's back in and that is a much better feeling for playing because you can really put your hand here or put it here and yeah that's it's really nice okay this looks like the final version of the top plate at least and let's see how the bottom comes out about seven and a half hours later and the print came out and as you can see it's a real beauty <laughs> not yet these are all the support structure stands which we have to remove to see the real print but you can already see that we now have this rounded side here which is pretty nice and i will go on and remove all the excess support structure and then we'll have a look again Okay, so here's the right sized hole for the cable. You have this indentation. Obviously here's some material missing, but that's not such a big deal. And of course we have the red row is a new black print inside. Okay, so let's put this together finally, I hope. Let's see how it works. it the finished retro fighter stick and it's really nice in the hand I'm really pleased with how this did come out so if you need buttons or um, a casing I will put links in the description if you want to build one yourself be my guest if you need any help just let me know um, I guess I will actually play around of Bruce Lee. One more thing before I begin playing Bruce Lee. I think I will put some felt feet on these. Okay, thanks for watching. Until the next video. Bye bye. This is Retro is Your New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and until next time.